What's up guys, welcome to another gameplay video. Today we are going to try out a mono white uh, kind of life gain style deck. Uh, I'm kind of running a variant of it with Archon of Sun's Grace. I know not all of them run that. Um, I don't have a super high enchantment count, but I just kind of thought it'd be worth trying out here. So uh, to go over the list really quickly, we do have four Healer's Hawk and four of the Alcied of Life's Bounty, I hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, as our one drops. Both, of course, have lifelink. The Life's Bounty does trigger on the Archon, which is nice as well. Um, in the two drop slot, a very obvious include of a Johnny's Pride Mate. Uh, great in any life gain strategy. It just services as a crazy, crazy good beater. Uh, Hushbringer is a very nice one because it shuts down a lot of what goes on in standard right now. Any of the Titans, things like that, they don't trigger, which is awesome. Uh, Daxos, another way to gain a bunch of life. It also just works as a very serviceable blocker a lot of the time because it has a very large amount of toughness based on your devotion. Uh, so a very sweet card. Uh, our three drop slot packed full of some really, really sweet cards. So Linden uh, are, is our basically one of creature in this slot. Uh, it's a 3-3 with Vigilance. Anytime something attacks, you gain a life. That triggers Pride Mate. That triggers a lot of different stuff. So very, very good. Uh, Heliod Sun's Crown, uh, obviously sometimes a creature, sometimes not. Ideally, I'd be running four of these, but I don't have any more mythic uh, wild cards. So we're running with two. A uh, very powerful card, though, for sure. The fact that it's indestructible gets around so, so much, so very sweet. Uh, two Gideon Blackblade. Uh, again, kind of services as a beater, uh, but also gives you kind of a way to exile some of the opponent's stuff long term. Uh, so it's got a little bit more value long term than a lot of these other cards. Banishing Light normally would be running a two of as well, but uh, to, to kind of make up for the uh, lack of Heliods, I figured we'd play some of those. They do count as enchantments for the Archon, obviously, but they also just are really, really powerful removal spells. So uh, great there. Archon of Sun's Grace, we're running two as a way to hopefully finish the game pretty quickly. And then a Johnny Strength of the Pride two as well. Here, you could easily run four of these. Uh, that That's, you know, kind of up to your discretion. They spit out Pride Mates, which are great. Uh, they also gain you life, and then they can help you deal with the opponent's board depending on where your life total's at. So, uh, very, very powerful deck. We do have four Castle Arden Veils. Uh, arguably should be running some Fabled Passages in here as well, but uh, this is just kind of a base list that I'm starting with. So, uh, we're going to try this out. I don't have high hopes for this deck. I will say that. Um, the reason I say that... It just doesn't seem like it has the legs to deal with a lot of this stuff. So Hushbringer's great to deal with some of these Titans and things like that. Uh, but I feel like a deck like this is going to get outpowered fairly quickly. Uh, that being said, I will keep this hand. Uh, we don't need a ton of lands in this deck. We've got 24, obviously, so we've got a high chance of drawing some. Uh, and we've got, obviously, a myriad of two drops here. So uh, I do think this is worth a keep. Um, I've played, I think, two games with this. Uh, went one and one. The first game was not even close, if I'm honest. Uh, they they annihilated this deck. The second game was against Mono Red, and um, because of the Robber of the Rich, we had a bit of a difficult time, but we did win it. Um, so it was certainly a fun game here. Gonna go ahead and play out the Pride Mate and then swing in so we get that counter there. Um, be great to get this up to four uh, as quickly as possible. So if they do have a Shadow of the Sky, oh, this might be Jeskai Fires. Okay, yeah, that does it. Uh, so we'll play this, play a Hushbringer, and we'll play a Healer's Hawk. Uh, you really just run things out here. We're going to lose to Definite Clarions if they've got them, no matter what. That's just, a, a, unfortunately, a fault of the deck. Yep. So good news here, we do get to Banishing Light the Sphinx. Bad news, we're really, really running out of gas here. Uh, and against this kind of deck, that can be very, very bad. So, uh, again, we're doing all we can. We're going to hopefully get some, some good draws here, but we'll see. Bouncing Banishing Light, I assume? Maybe just Hushbringer? Okay. Just save themselves some damage. Uh, if they've got a way to deal with the Hawk. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um... I think what we do here is Banishing Light on the Fey of Wishes. Uh, play the Hushbringer and then swing in it to Fairy here. Uh, just go ahead and get rid of that. 
Teferi really doesn't hit us that hard, but the bounce is what we don't want to get back to, so uh, I do think it's worth it. Again, Hushbringer doing a lot of work like we, we're seeing here. Unfortunately, we're drawing quite a number of lands. Uh, we'll play another Hushbringer um, and pass. So this is the danger here, though, obviously. Um, yep. The, the, the fact that we're going to get outpowered is ridiculous. Uh, great that we can shut some of this stuff down, but... I'm going to say no blocks here. Johnny. Johnny's good. Not great, but not bad. Uh, we'll spit out one of these guys. We're going to swing with all of these. We're going to trigger that so we can trade, ideally, here. Uh, don't know if it's going to work if they have any removal spell. Oh, cool. I love Outlaw's Merriment. Sweet card. Oh, well, that's very bad. Yeah, we just lose. All right, well, that was a pretty quick game. As you can see, and this is the worry with this deck, um, it has some bad draws. A lot of our deck is not, like, super, super strong. Oh, also, we did make it to Platinum. This is the first time I've ever made it to Platinum. Uh, thankfully, doing all these gameplay videos helps us get there. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you can see the downside of a deck like this, so... Uh, we will obviously give it the full three games just to see, um, but I, I just don't see that this deck has the legs. There are certainly a lot of variants. I do want to point that out, though. Uh, some, like I said, don't run Archon, but they run a lot of other interruption kind of stuff, like Hate Bear kind of things. Maybe that's a better way to go. I, I don't know. Um, I'm going to keep this. It's a bit slower, but I think it's fine. Um, Daxos into Linden into Archon seems pretty solid if we can manage it. And it looks like we're up against Gruul Aggro, uh, which is a very powerful deck for sure. Go ahead and play Castle and we'll play Daxos. Um, so, I don't know. We might have a chance here. They've got a lot of fight effects and things like that, though. So, there's definitely a possibility we just kind of... Adventures? Okay. Sure. Team for Adventures, you got it. Go ahead and do this. And we'll attack in. Just to go ahead and gain some life. Uh, next turn, we really just need a land, uh, is what this amounts to. Uh, or a Banishing Light would also be quite good to get rid of this Lovestruck Beast. And there you go. Look at that. Ask and you shall receive. Get rid of Lovestruck Beast. Go ahead and swing in here. Gain a couple life back and see what they do. Nothing. I like it. Um, it's a very this deck is very straightforward. It feels very easy to pilot in terms of you don't have a. I mean, you do have decision making, of course, but a lot of it is just very dependent on you know whatever you've got in your hand. You're gonna want to play it out. Uh, I don't like that it runs. So this this is the issue we're in now is we've got a couple legendary creatures here, which would be great to get out, but we can only have one on the field, obviously, at a time. So. Uh, we do run into that a fair amount, which I don't like. Um, but, you know, there's uh, that's fine. Like, things happen, of course. You got to do what you got to do. Um, we'll swing with both here. Almost hope they triple block. Okay. Didn't think they would, but eh, worth a shot. Uh, we'll play Archon here. Get a flyer out uh, to at least block or deal with this Fae of Wishes. If they want to deal with the Archon, we've got a backup, so. Very, very positive. Uh, also, I'm really excited. The uh, rewards, the proxy rewards that you're seeing scroll down below uh, are actually coming in today. So I'm really, really excited to see how those turned out. Uh, always fun to, to check out the new proxies as they come in. I kind of keep my own playset of each one. Uh, and then we obviously give the rest out via Patreon. So uh, if you do, if you're interested in those, please check out our Patreon link. That's down below as well. You can you can check that out there. Okay, doubling up on that. That's fine. Don't care too much about that because again, we have the backup. Um, obviously not ideal, but worse things have happened. 
So, we will go ahead and swing in first. Gain some life. They're going to block there, that makes sense. We'll play back up Archon. Um, gain a life. We really need some, like, not legendary creatures to be drawn. <laughs> Um, another Banishing Light would honestly be really, really solid. They're obviously going to have a pretty strong play this turn. Uh, they've got plenty of land, they've got the Lucky Clover out, so they could do a million different things. Um, so a Banishing Light to at least deal with some kind of major permanent would be ideal. Um, Bone Crusher Giant, very powerful. Beanstalk Giant with the Adventure side, yeah. We'll see what they can do. Uh, I have been really enjoying also, uh, the previous gameplay video was the Rakdos Knights video. Um, I've kind of fallen in love with that deck a little bit. I really don't, I don't generally go for just like straight aggro decks. Guys, we're just calling all the shots here. I'm loving it. Um, what do we actually take here? I guess we just take the Bone Crusher Giant. Because it's the only thing that can like trade off with stuff here. Um... So yeah, I've actually really fallen in love with the Rakdos Knights deck. It's not an amazing deck necessarily, but it just has a lot of little, like, uh, not trick plays, but really special play, like, just things that pop out of the woodwork that I keep learning kind of new little bits and pieces to the deck, and I love that. Uh, it's very, very fun, so I'm very excited to, uh, to keep playing that. That's actually how we got to Platinum, is just um, chugging through with that deck. All right, well, that's going to do wonders. Uh, for the opponent. That card is so good. Storm's Wrath is ridiculously good. Granted, we do have Daxos and Linden in hand to kind of back this all up, but uh, we are missing a land for sure. I think they have to pull the trigger, obviously, on the Storm's Wrath. I don't think they've got an option there. Return to hand, sure, makes sense. And they've also got that to get back something of theirs, so that's quite good as well. Uh, yep, gain some life. Up to 41, that's quite good. Uh, if we get a Johnny, we can just like exile their board, which is really fun. Um, yeah, you get Bone Crusher. Alright, so play this out. Play this out. Pass. We'll see what they got. Faye again, of course. Makes sense. Fight effect. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Ooh, and Shadow Spear. Very cool. So this is often the trouble that I would imagine this deck has, is finishing it out. Like... We've we've done a lot of damage. We've secured a very strong lead in terms of uh, our actual life totals. But how are we going to finish the game? And I feel like that's that's generally the struggle with life gain decks is they get to this point a lot, and unless they're very much ahead, um, it's very very difficult for them to to truly do anything. Do they? I'm gonna say no blocks. If they've got an answer. Oh, they just have lifelink, though. Um, that's fine, though. Land, not great for us. I think we just pass. Uh, we can castle Ardenvale to block the Bone Crusher Giant, but that's about it. Um, and they're just going to continue to continuously gain life here. So, uh, unfortunately, again, I think this game is going to be slipping away pretty quickly here. Let's go ahead and do this. They know it's coming. I don't think that's a, a surprise by any means. Uh, let's see, let's see. Also, guys, uh, speaking of these proxies and things like that, I've been making, like, way more proxies uh, than we used to. Um, and I'm trying to pick cards that I feel you guys might be interested in. Uh, so what I will say is, um, for anybody that doesn't know, the patrons are the only ones that actually get to vote on the upcoming month's, uh, rewards. 
That being said, uh, if you do have a suggestion for a, a proxy that you would like to see or that might entice you to maybe at least take a look at the Patreon and consider it, please, by all means, let us know. Um, greatly, greatly appreciate that. Honestly, uh, it would mean a lot to us if you would. Um, can't do that. I don't know how this would work. I'm going to try it, because uh, we are going to lose either way. Cool. That actually kind of worked. I mean, granted, we're, we're not getting very far, but... Uh, does show you the power of a Johnny, but, I mean, we're still going to be in very, very bad shape here. They've got plenty to deal with uh, what we've got going on. Which is a lonely Daxos. Uh, also, should have kept the other one just so I could have attacked, but not that it matters that much. Yep. Yep. I really appreciate you guys uh, watching all of these uh, gameplay videos, by the way. We've seen a lot more viewership on these than we have in the past, which is awesome. We, we certainly appreciate the, uh, the support. Go ahead and do this. It's not going to matter too much um, in pass. Here, they've got a million different ways to deal with us, though, so I'm going to make them do it, but... If we get very, very close in life total, then it's it's fine. <clears throat> I really don't even think there's a strong draw. I mean, so they're holding the Beanstalk Giant. Uh, they may play it here, but they're definitely holding it. So that way, on the off chance that we draw another Ajani, they've got a, a solution for it. Unfortunately... Um, I don't even think that would get us out. Okay, well, they are going to commit. Um, but I just don't think that... Yeah. Uh, we'll block there. Leave ourselves the Ajani out. Um, but that's, that's literally all we can do. Yep. Uh, going to go ahead and concede here then. Uh, again, not being able to close out the game. So uh, we'll give it one more shot. Uh, but again, don't have high hopes for this one. Um, as fun as this deck is, uh, I, I actually really like Mono White Life Gain. Uh, I don't know why, I've always kind of had a bit of an affinity for like the Soul Sisters style decks, uh, but obviously in this standard environment I just don't think it's the, the best way to go. I did like it uh, when Radiant Angel and things like that were really, really good. Uh, I actually quite enjoyed it, but um, in general I just don't see it as being that powerful. Uh, and against these mono red decks, they just shock. Yep, there we go. Castle, Primate. And again, you really just, it's a very linear deck. You just run things out. And um, occasionally you will have to make, like here we can, uh, if we draw a land, we either have Blackblade or Heliod, both of which are very, very powerful, but like, which is the best? Um, I think in this given circumstance, uh, let's go ahead and get Gideon on mine. Ah, oh, duh, can't target itself. Um, so I I just don't love this deck. Uh, I think it's okay, but I don't think it's great. Um, does some really, really cool stuff in the early game. Yep. Yep. Hmm. I'm going to put Pride Mate out there. Don't know if that's the best thing to do or not, but we're going to try it. And then we'll swing in with Gideon. They may just have another shock or something. 
Yeah. Good enough. All right. Well, we certainly attack here. We'll plus, but again, I don't think it's going to matter. So now we're in Embercleave territory. Um, that's obviously terrible for us. They did not play Embercleave, though. That's interesting. So they probably just don't have it. Um, are they going to come at Gideon or are they coming at us? Gideon. Okay. Takes it down to two. Sure. I'm going to take time to set up here uh, since we they do not have the Ember Cleave. We're going to plus, submit zero, and we'll, uh, we'll swing. This is my favorite thing. When they block here and they don't realize it's indestructible. That was just a wasted block. They saved themselves some life, but I would not have blocked that. Um, that happens significant, like a significant portion of the time. Uh, is what I will say like it would have been much better I think or much more advantageous for them to not block take the four swing in with either the two scorch spitters at Gideon or the bone crusher and then the other ones at me uh, to start dealing more damage their goal is just to kill me as quick as possible so that seems like a better way to do it um, but obviously opponent thought otherwise and maybe that's better I don't know now they do have an Ember Cleave, which is just grand. Um, play this out, play this out, and pass. Uh, this is where we're in really bad shape, though. Uh, especially with Ember Cleave, as well as the castle uh, Embereth out. Like, they're very, very well set up at this point. Um... Do I block? I don't think so. Because it's just going to die anyway, right? Oh, they're going to play this first. Okay, well now, yeah, I do block. That was potentially just bad playing on my opponent's side. Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, let's put a counter here on the flyer. If they've got a shock, I mean... Our opponent is playing in a very interesting way, is what I will say. Um, so, let's Banishing Light on the Ember Cleave. Get rid of that. Um, do this on this. We're going to swing with both. Gain ourselves some life. Get this out of range. And this out of range. I guess they're both going to be out of range anyway. We probably should have doubled up on the Hushbringer. Um, I'm trying to get things out of range of burn spells, so in particular Bone Crusher Giant, obviously, we're thankfully out of range of that. Uh, Shock. Lava Coil is the one that I would be somewhat worried about with Hushbringer, um, but obviously not the worry, I guess, now. Linden. Nice. Very, very good card to draw here. Okay. Uh, yes. Three attackers. Uh, let's put a counter on you. Put another counter on you. Cool. Uh, we did get there then. Sweet. Uh, awesome, awesome. Uh, again, unfortunately, I don't think this deck has the legs to really, really get there, but it is a fun deck, and I do think it'll be worth giving it another chance. Uh, so we'll do our normal uh, six games with a deck, so we'll get in another video with uh, three more games with this one, but hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, again, please do check out our Patreon. We have been releasing quite a number of new proxies there, uh, so if you're interested in picking any of those up, that is the only way to do it. Uh, we, of course, do have our Instagram link down below as well. If you're not already following us, we do post content very, very regularly. Uh, I think it's like seven times a day we post stuff. So please do check that stuff out. We really do appreciate it. Thank you again for watching and all the support you guys have shown recently. We really do appreciate it. But uh, I guess I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next gameplay video.